the last video got cut off. Um, and when you take the square root of the number that we have here, did that in my calculator, you get approximately 26.7. So as you can see, it's much um, less work in law of cosines when you're finding a side versus an angle. And you might be wondering, how do I know when I should use law of sines versus law of cosines? When you have side, angle, side, that is usually a time where you're going to use law of cosines. Um, if you have all three sides and um, no angle, you're also going to use law of cosines. So if you have side, 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 or side, angle, side, you would want to use law of cosines. And now we're going to move on to the lesson master. All right, so number one, I've got my triangle where I'm told that side A is 5. So I'm going to go ahead and label that. This right here would be a 5. Side B is 6, so this would be a 6, which means this must be angle B. This must be angle A because it's across from A. And the measure of angle C is 80 degrees. So notice I have side, angle, side, which is a time where I'd want to use law of cosines, and I'm asked to find the length of C. I'm going to highlight, and this is the angle that I have, and this is the side across from it, so that when I use law of cosines, I make sure that this is my side squared and this is my cosine of the angle. So I've got C squared equals 6 squared plus 5 squared minus 2 times 6 times 5 times the cosine of 80 degrees. Well, this is very similar to the example we had just done. All I know everything here, so I can put all of this in my calculator because my calculator knows order of operations. So I'm going to type that into my calculator. 6 squared plus 5 squared minus 2 times 6 times 5 times the cosine of 80. And then my last step is to take my square root and get my answer. I'm going to let you do that step on your own. Let's look at our next one. It says in triangle ABC, so I'm going to draw a triangle ABC. Side AB is 20, side BC is 40, and side AC is 30. And I'm asked to find angle C. Again, it's side, 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 so I'm going to use law of cosines. This one is going to be like the first type we did, where it takes a few more steps because we're looking for the angle as opposed to um, the side like we were doing in this one. Okay, so I've got 20 squared equals 40 squared plus 30 squared minus 2 times 40 times 30 times the cosine of C. So I know this is 400 equals, do this in my calculator, 40 squared plus 30 squared. So we've got 2,500 minus 2 times 40 times 30 is 2,400 cosine of C. Again, don't be tempted to subtract these because this 2,400 is multiplied by cosine of C. We cannot subtract these. Instead, we need to solve for C, so we subtract 2,500 from both sides. Okay. 
Then I get negative 2100 equals negative 2400 cosine of C. Still solving for C, so I divide both sides by negative 2400. Doing this on my calculator. Then I get 0.875 equals the cosine of C. And I'm solving for the angle, so I need to take the inverse cosine of each side. And I'm going to let you put this in your calculator and get your answer for angle C. Go to our next problem. Same triangle and triangle ABC. Length of AB is 20, length of BC is 40, and the length of AC is 30. This time we're asked to find angle A. So 40 is going to be that side that is across from um, the angle, so it's going to be 40 squared equals 20 squared plus 30 squared minus 2 times 20 times 30 times the cosine of A. I know that 40 squared is 1600. Then I'm going to take 20 squared plus 30 squared, and I'll get 1,300 minus 2 times 20 times 30, I get 1,200. Again, do not subtract these. It's very tempting to want to do that, but the 1,200 is being multiplied by cosine of A. So we subtract 1,300 from both sides. Then I get that 300 equals negative 1,200 cosine of A. Divide both sides by negative 1,200. Cosine of A equals, this is going to be negative, and I know that 3 divided by 12 is a fourth, so negative 0.25. We don't know that. 300 divided by negative 1200, and I get negative 0.25. Again, I'm finding the angle, so I'm going to take the inverse of each side, And angle A is the inverse cosine of negative 0.25. I'll let you put that in your calculator and find your angle. For number 3, we're asked to find side X. Again, notice side, angle, side. Again, this is the fourth one in the row, but we're going to continue to use law of cosines. I'm going to highlight the angle and the side across from it that I know where to put this in my formula. x squared equals 40 squared plus 70 squared minus 2 times 40 times 70 times the cosine of 32 degrees. I can put all of this in the calculator since there's no variables here. So. 40 squared plus 70 squared minus 2 times 70 times 40 cosine 32 and then I take the square root and I will get my answer. I'm going to let you put that in your calculator yourself. Right. Again, I'm looking for the measure of angle X, and I know all three sides, 
So once again, I'm going to use law of cosines. I'm going to highlight angle inside across from it. So I have 4.86 squared equals 3 squared plus 7 squared minus 2 times 3 times 7 times the cosine of x. I'm going to use my calculator to help me out here. 4.86 squared is 23.6196. I'm going to do my 3 squared plus 7 squared. I get 58 minus 2 times 3 times 7. 42 cosine of x. I'm going to subtract 58 from both sides. Negative 34.3804 equals negative 42 cosine of x. So I divide both sides by negative 42. And I get 0.8185. 2, 4 equals cosine of x. And I'm thinking at this point, you know how to find x from there. Okay. Going on to number 8. We're supposed to use the picture down here at the bottom. And we're asked to find the height of the house. And we're given a hint to first find x. Well, I know this angle, that's the only angle I know, or is, and I know this side. Well, this right here, this is a really great problem. Like, if you can try and figure out x first, I'll tell you, you're going to have to use, um, I believe it's law of signs for this one. Um, yes, you're going to have to use law of signs. If you can find x, then you'll be able to find h by just using a, a regular trig function. Um, but you have to realize this is a straight line. So if this is 20, this angle right here is 180. And not 180, what am I saying? It adds up to 180, it's 160. Sorry about that. Because these form a linear pair. So if this is 20, this is 160, so that they add up to 180. So this is 160 and 15, that's 175. This angle here must be 5 degrees. So we know all three angles. That's when we use law of sines, which now it probably feels like it's been a really long time since we used law of sines. But we know this angle here and the side across from it, which is the 100. So sine of 5 degrees divided by 100 is equal to sine of 15 degrees divided by x, because x is the one I'm looking for. Cross multiply. Alright, and then to find x, I'm going to divide both sides by the sine of 5 degrees. You're going to put all of that in your calculator, and you're going to find x. I'm going to let you do that. Then, we can just use our regular trig ratio. We have this side, this one, and this one. Remember, this forms a 90 degree angle. So what relationship? We have the angle, we have the opposite, and the hypotenuse. Opposite and hypotenuse is sine, so the sine of 20 degrees is equal to whatever you got for x is going to go right here, divided by h, and you'll cross-multiply and solve for h.